All right. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for everyone uh, turning up today and coming to hear us talk and look at the work. Uh, I would love to start by thanking everyone at street level, Malcolm and Isolt and John and also Bill for meticulously hanging all of this work under our instruction. And also a massive thank you to the team at VU and uh, Fanny is here today and Anne-Marie and Hubert and all the team through there. Uh, they really looked after me when I was over there. It was a fantastic experience. So I thought I would speak very briefly about the work and, and then leave a bit more time if anyone wants to ask any questions. Um, so just to give you an idea of the kind of process that I went through with this work, uh, in the build-up to the residency, I had some general ideas of things I wanted to look at and some areas of interest, but I decided I didn't want to turn up with a very specific project already formulated because I'd never been to Quebec City, I'd never been to Quebec, um, so I just thought I would arrive with an open mind and I wanted the location and the research to come through first and to try and tell me what to do that way. The only uh, notable preparation I, I did really was reading a book called Wasa Wasa, which is a true story of two guys of Scottish descent who went over to find their fortune in Canada and Alaska during the gold rush around 1900. And I think this is a good introduction into the minds of those people who emigrated to Canada through time from early humans to Europeans as it talks about the challenges of the environment and the relationships established between these two guys and the First Nations and Inuit people that they became involved with. I like the story because in general, my work uh, is interested in humans' relationships with their environment and uh, the natural world around them. So as I was looking at migration through time, uh, causes, motivations, and what leads people to undertake migrations? What are the push-pull factors? Uh, so is it necessity for survival or to avoid persecution? Or is it necessity for the soul, the necessity for adventure? And why do humans feel the need to explore? Uh, also, I was interested to think about how migration might look in the future. And thinking maybe one or 200 years or maybe even a thousand years ahead, what might that be? So, so basically I was thinking about migration on a very long time scale from the past and into the future. And then when I arrived in Quebec, I decided, decided to start shooting everything that I came in contact with and try and let the locality tell me what to photograph. So I wasn't too rigid about specific ideas at the start. I was just going to go with my gut instinct and photograph everything around. So uh, also during the first week I was there, um, I don't know if anyone's uh, who's familiar with the complex that VU Photo is within, but this place, Meduse, is a fantastic complex of galleries and studios and workshops of all different mediums all together in this one place. And there's a, a great array of people working away and I thought it was a really interesting community to be part of because it made me think about working creatively, not just in a very photographic kind of way, which I'm used to, but um, hearing how other people work in different mediums. So I find that quite inspiring. Uh, then I started researching what I was going to do. And I was looking at a lot of graphs and charts and diagrams a lot of it online, uh, online resources. And it was all giving information about migration and demographics and history. And while looking at all these shapes and lines and graphics, it struck me that this might be a good layer to literally add to my photographs and to the project in general. I thought it could help create more depth to the work that was being created um, in a very short space of time, four weeks, uh, I, I wanted to try and get the nuts and bolts of it done in four weeks while I was there in April. And usually I would work in months or maybe even years on a project. 
So I thought with that limited time scale, I thought this idea might help add an extra layer of complexity and um, context to the work. Uh, so I started working away, and after about seven or eight days of uh, trying to figure out what I was doing, I had a bit of an epiphany and decided to follow these graphs and lines and um, this graphic element and pursue that. And I instantly felt a lot more relaxed about how to continue. Uh, up until that point, I will admit it was very stressful um, trying to come up with an idea that would result in work that I would feel is worthy to go on a gallery wall. And I put quite a lot of pressure on myself to try and come up with something decent. Um, everyone at VU and everyone at street level was incredibly supportive, but um, the stressor that I am decided to put some more pressure on. And I'd intentionally set myself this challenge of turning up without a concrete idea of what I was doing. So I find it hard to start with. I was in an unfamiliar environment in uh, an apartment in this new city for a month and I was faced with my own abilities and my own doubts every day. But it basically taught me a lot about who I am as a, an artist or a photographer and I think it was a, a great experience to go through in the setting that I was in. Uh, just to kind of wrap up, if you have the time to uh, take a look at the written work about our project. There's the blog with the, the, the photographer's uh, posts. There's also two great pieces of writing. One from Claire Moder, which was mentioned earlier on, very poetic piece uh, about the project, and also a great summation of our work and opinions from John McDougall. So I do encourage you to um, have a look at that. Um, and then finally, yeah, just it was, uh, it was a great experience, and thank you to uh, Melanie, Jose, and Bertrand for your communication and um, energy and enthusiasm for everything. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about anything that's on the wall, then please do either ask now or ask later on. Thank you very much. I remember you talking to me about the uh, Jacques Cartier trip to the Canada. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, the, the black and white image at the, at the top there with the graphic, um, I should say that the graphics don't necessarily directly relate to the image that they're placed over. Um, but this is an interpretation of the route maps uh, two route maps of Jacques Cartier who uh, first founded uh, Quebec and certainly first opened up the St. Lawrence River uh, in the Quebec area. So he undertook these journeys around, um, is it 14, 1534. 1534? And another one a few years later um, where he sailed into St. Lawrence and kind of explored these areas. Um, and then so this this graphic is a, um, a mashing together of the physical journey that he took on the two separate occasions. Uh, 